Shinichi Suzuki was born in 1898 in Nagoya, Japan, as one of 12 children. And his father was a traditional Japanese string instrument maker who went on to produce the first major violin factory in Japan. He became a successful teacher and performer and a member of the musical community. At that time, Suzuki had his first major revelation that children in Japan could learn music just as they learned to speak by listening and imitating their parents. He believed that all children have the ability to learn music and if a child is successful and met with praise, then the learning process is easy. During the war, Suzuki was evacuated to Matsumoto where he founded a music school. The point of the music school was to offer the displaced children a nurturing and loving environment. And Suzuki felt that by nurturing this talent with love, he'd be able to develop noble character in each of the children he worked with. The results of what Suzuki was doing in Matsumoto were so profound that when videos started circulating in the late 1950s, teachers in the US began asking themselves how they could actually recreate these results. It was from this point that the rapid globalization of the Suzuki method began. Right up there. Beautiful. Because Leila, it looks really nice. Everything looks great. Okay, off you go. The center of the Suzuki method is really about the family being the best place for children at a very young age to learn. And so he developed a method that really involved parents in what we call the Suzuki Triangle, which is the, the relationship between the parent, the teacher, and the child. This is a hard habit to break when you wrap the finger around. So just make sure this one should lay on the top. Well, it switches. The teacher works one-to-one -one with the child. The parent observes that and takes those lessons home to be able to work with their child, not as a teacher, but actually as their parent. The monkey climbing up the ladder. Okay, you can do that. Land on E without making too much noise. Okay. You can do, I'm a little monkey climbing up the ladder. All right, how many times are you going to do it? Um, eight. Eight times. Okay, go ahead. I think one of the things that we learned with Maribel uh, or with Francisco through the years is that we can make it more, more fun, more enjoyable. Uh, we, when we practice, we try to make it so that it doesn't obs obstruct some other activity that they may be doing or that they may be finishing up. I think that's important that you're in a good mood when you start to practice. I think in the Suzuki method, the thing that's so unique um, for me as a parent with my child in the Suzuki method is that I get to see all his little successes and actually be a part of it myself. At the very early ages, children are very sensitive to how their parents uh, think of them and they're looking for praise at every success that they have. And so the method is really designed for that praise mechanism at the very early age when a child can achieve a very, very small but very successful hurdle. Nicely done, take that. What's been transformative over the years is the amount of collaboration that a lot of Suzuki teachers have um, applied to the method, opening their doors to other Suzuki teachers, trying to bring in the best practices that they could. And so you found that there are some amazing results with children being able to play incredibly high levels. about the Suzuki program was the fact that not only did you learn to play an instrument on your own, but you played in groups with other children as well. So there was a fun element to playing an instrument. One, two, three, four. That was a great job. Okay, now he's solo. Okay, but if you're gonna be an awesome accompaniment, and still support him, but sound like a stormtrooper, ready to like take over the ship. As part of the method, you have your private lesson, but you also have group classes. 
And group class is a way of socializing children and giving them a way to play together, but using the language of music to be able to play with each other. So that starts right from the beginning. As a child gets older and more independent, we found ways at the school to be able to develop that group class um, into a different type of experience um, that will go up into the older teenage years. We have a group prelude um, that are three teens, and then we have a teenage group called Bravace. And then working on repertoire outside of the Suzuki method, repertoire from the pop and rock world, things that they can express themselves with um, and that they can have social identity with, with, with children of their own age. Suzuki believed that music is inherent in any child and every child, uh, no matter what their background is. And so we start with a general TOTS class um, that enables children to experience rhythm and pitch in very general terms. Look at how nice and relaxed these hands are. Gorgeous. Everybody is ready on the right hand. Here we go. Our general TOTS class starts from, us, from, from the womb almost. <laughs> So wonderful ways of exposing your child to general principles and, and structures of music. But instrumental lessons uh, normally start around about the age of five at, at the school. And we'd encourage uh, parents through the exposure process to listen to their children about what they want to do themselves. Very often a child is very influenced by uh, a family member or a concert that they've seen or an instrument that they'd seen at school and suddenly their imagination is sort of turned on fire and we like to run with that. Having said that, probably 80% of our children uh, don't necessarily have a strong idea of what they want to do and so by exposing them to the different instruments that are available to very young children uh, that helps them develop a process or a feeling for the school or a like for a particular teacher. Well, I just like playing all these pretty notes and um, that you get to express yourself and it's very nice. The Suzuki method offers all the instruments that a child can study at a very young age. So there's violin and viola and cello and piano. We also have flute of the wind instruments um, on, and guitar. And all of those instruments can be downsized and made tiny small <laughs> so that they can actually be played by children. They can just get bigger as the child grows. If you put your hands on this, it's very long and you can't reach all of the notes. And if you have a shorter one, your arms can reach it and you can reach the notes. All of the notes. Most parents don't come to us wanting their child to play at Carnegie Hall. Most parents want us to, what they want to use music as a way of teaching their child something artistic, but also as a way to help them learn how to learn. And that's really at the heart of the Suzuki method.